couple of months ago, DF Robot set out to make a powerful, easy to use AI camera called Husky Lens. And here it is. Hey everyone, this is Project SPC, and today I'm going to show you an engineering evaluation unit of the Husky Lens. I'll go over hardware, show you some of the different modes, and then I'll hook it up to a Latte Panda Alpha so we can see what kind of output we get from the serial bus. Before I get into details, I'd like to first thank DF Robot for sending me this. As a disclaimer, this is a prototype and does not reflect the final product, both in appearance and firmware functionality. And if you've been following the Kickstarter campaign, you would see that in update number four, they posted the cosmetic appearance revisions, and you can see that this one is not the latest version. So this device is really trying to give makers an affordable, easily configurable AI camera that integrates nicely into their project. Instead of spending time configuring an AI camera and learning image processing algorithms, they can do what they do best, make stuff. On to hardware. On the front we have a 2 inch non touchscreen display. On top we have a rocking control for left, right, and selectable input. And on the opposite side we have a single button. On the back we have the camera and I'm not able to determine the megapixel value of this particular unit. Micro USB port for power and updating the firmware the Kendrite K210 processor, and a four-wire gravity connector, which this cable is for. Um, red and black are for power, and the green and blue are for the serial bus, and this is compatible with 3.3 and 5 volt power. Let's power it up and go through the different modes. I have a Raspberry Pi Zero power adapter, which is going to power this nicely. Starting all the way at the left, we've got face recognition, object tracking, object recognition, line tracking, color recognition, tag recognition, and general settings. So first up is object recognition mode, and you'll see that I have my computer monitor in the background. It's doing an excellent job of recognizing that as a TV monitor. Now since I got the Husky Lens, they actually gave me an updated firmware, still an unreleased version and still an early release, but it actually does a lot better job at recognizing some of the preset objects that are programmed in here. If you want to select an object, go ahead and point at it, click the top right button, and you'll see it remembers it. Go ahead and click it again to forget and once more to confirm. On to face recognition. You'll see I have a picture of Elon Musk on my phone, and you see that it recognizes there's a face. If you want to remember a face, go ahead and click and point, and click the top right button, and it will remember that face. And you can see it follows the face around. If you want to delete something from the memory, go ahead and point it at it again, click the top right button, and then click again to forget the face. Next up is color recognition. If you have some colored objects in front of you, go ahead and click on one of them with the top right button, and it will remember it. As you see, I move the camera around. It does a pretty good job of keeping up with that red ball. If you want to forget a color, just go ahead and click the top right button once. Click again to forget. Now you can select a new color. I'm going to select blue in the background. And I have a pair of blue wire cutters that are not the same shade of blue. And you can see it's doing a pretty good job of just keeping with the ball in the background and it's not picking up any blue on those wire cutters. On to object tracking. So I've got one of those balls in front of me. I'm going to point it right at the ball. Click the top right button once. And it's going to remember that. So if I give this ball a push, You can see it follows it all the way off the table. And one more time with a little bit more speed. Next is line tracking mode. Go ahead and point at a line you'd like to follow. Click the top right button. And you can see the green arrow, it overlaps on top of your line. Click 
click it again to forget. Let's try a couple different shapes, see how it does. So here's a slightly curved line and you can see it kind of draws a vector that follows the line itself. Let's move on to the computer interface. If you've read the Kickstarter page, you'll see that this uses an I squared C connection or a UART connection. But I think a lot of people may want to use this with an Arduino, so I've got the Latte Panda Alpha's built-in Arduino Leonardo that I'm going to pair with. So first I'm going to plug in my four-wire gravity connector. I've got my red and black pins on the 5-volt line and ground. You can see it powered up nicely. And for the digital pins, I've got the green cable connected to the digital zero pin and the blue cable connected to the digital one pin. And that's going to make my serial interface with the computer. Now before I go diving into the Arduino program, I did want to go over the parameters and the format you should expect to receive the data in on the serial bus. For parameters, we've got a baud rate of 57,600, 8N1 configuration. And for the data received, you get several bytes that make up a packet of information. You can see the format here. There's a couple of headers, an address, data length, command, and then we get into the actual data. So let's go, scroll down and see what an example looks like. Now, if you remember when I had the Husky lens up, you had two different types of objects appear on the screen depending on the mode. Most of the time it was a box that surrounded the object you were looking at, but in line tracking mode we also had an arrow. So the data we're going to receive, most of it, is actually going to be a coordinates based on the screen size. So x direction 0 to 319, and in the y direction we have 0 to 239. So the first two data points you get if you are in the box mode, you get the coordinates X and Y for the center of the box on the screen. You then get the width and the height of the box. If you were in line tracking mode, you would get the origin of the arrow in an X and Y coordinate, and then you would get the arrowhead in the X and Y coordinate. And then finally, we have the learned index. Now, I believe this unit will eventually be able to store up to 10 objects. So depending on which object is in the screen, you'll get a different number. But this tells you which object you have currently on the screen. And the format you get these in is in the form of a low and a high byte. And if you're not familiar with that, you can see the math in my Arduino program to go from a combo low and high byte to a um, value representation for the coordinates. Okay, so I have the Arduino program opened and I have a very basic code up on the screen. It's just going to initialize the UART connection on the Arduino and it's going to initialize a USB interface back to the computer so we can read what is going on. And in the heart of the code, I just have it writing whatever it reads from the Husky lens. So if I go ahead and I point this at an object, that it um, can recognize and I click remember I'm going to start to see a stream of data come in and you can see that it is coming in so if I go ahead and I forget the object so it stops streaming data in and I start to take a look at the actual data you'll see some of the familiar values you saw in the document earlier like device ID 11 and the headers of 55 and AA and as we get down we start to see some values that would represent the coordinates and the um, width and the height of the box. So I created a second Arduino program which actually parses that information out, which I have here. It goes ahead and finds the unique header that we're looking for, that 55, and it reads each individual piece until it actually gets to data, does the math to create the low and high byte together to create the actual value that we can um, interpret and I'm going to go ahead and upload that right now and we will see what happens on the Husky Lens with the second program. So the second program is loaded and I'm going to hit remember on this computer monitor. So if you take a look at where the box sits, it's kind of towards the middle of the Husky Lens screen. 
it's kind of a little bit over a third the size of the screen and you notice that the height goes down past the edge of the screen. So we've got all that data in there and this is the first learned ID. If I hit stop and we start to actually look at the data that we got, you'll see that the X origin was just about the center of the screen along with the Y origin and for the X value we see that it took up just over a third of the screen which is what we saw and we also see that the height was actually greater than what the screen was capable of displaying but we did see that that edge on the bottom side of that box did go beyond the edge of the screen so I believe that is a plausible result or a plausible value and of course we got learned ID number one which is the only object it is capable of learning at this time and there you have it your first look at the DF Robot Husky Lens. Now, like I said in the beginning, DF Robot set out to make a powerful, easy to use AI camera. And at this time, I do agree with that. As long as you're able to parse out the data from the serial bus, you should be able to integrate it into a wide range of projects. So now that I've covered some of the very basics of this, I would like to try and make a couple of projects with it. I'm not sure what yet, and if you have any ideas, you can leave those in the comments below. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. Um, maybe even subscribe, and thanks for watching.